Hello YouTube, this is Bob's Comics coming at you with a quick product review. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing a new, uh, brand new, this is, um, right now this is being filmed in May of 2020, and this is the first offering of a new product called uh, Gator, it's from Gator Guard Comics, aka the Nashvillians, that's why I'm wearing all my Nashville stuff today, and um, it's called the Original Gator Guard Case. And the reason that I may want to make sure that I cite the original Gator Guard case is because I believe that there will probably be more iterations of this as the product develops, but it's only been on the market for like a month and a half. So this is going to be an early review. I hope you all can enjoy this. I did purchase these, uh, so full disclosure, there's no, no free stuff going on here. They sent an extra set of screws. So if you want to say they paid me $1.99, I guess you could. <laughs> so... Uh, here is the company here, it's GatorGuardComics.com and of course it's the original Gator Guard case and uh, they're, they're citing some things that it can be used with so you can check that. Of course the link will be in the description below. And without further ado, I'm going to present to you two things. First is going to be the first um, slab that I did. So this is a slab at home type kit and you see it's got the Gator Guard logo on there. Uh, this is, of course, my book. So I really like that they have all. Let's let's get right into it. This is for people who are not um, wanting to slab a book with a grading company. So if you don't care about the grade, and instead you're just looking for a lot of protection and a solid um, display uh, for your book, this is a great way to go. We'll get into uh, some of the pros and cons, and then also a comparison between what I consider to be their top competitors at this moment. Um, so right away, pros, price. Uh, it's 36 bucks for a two pack and that includes shipping, of course. Again, that's right now. As products increase and things change, who knows the price could go up or down. You know, there's really no way to know right now. Uh, <clears throat> I think that that's comparable. Uh, when I get to my um, segments on their competition, some things are cheaper, some things are more expensive, so it's it's in the range of slab at home kits, if you will. Uh, there is a small discount for ordering in, in larger bulk sizes, but it's kind of it's not a big discount. It probably just represents a little bit of combined shipping. Uh, what's really nice is you'll notice that they have these screws at the top, and you may say, well, that looks like a button. Well, on the back, it actually has the screw there, so you actually do have to manually screw it in so there you go um, and the colors are really nice and they have lots of colors available that have black blue green orange red and silver and the next book that I do on camera will be actually a copy uh, with silver screws so very nice it's UV protected uh, it's also very solid on the sides there's no gap or anything and this thing I mean you try and twist it it is as solid as a CGC case maybe more solid. It is super heavy and right on par with the CGC case. Uh, way more solid than a CBCS case or a PGX case um, and, and a couple of other um, slab at home type stuff that we'll mention soon. Uh, the UV protection is great so they're basically begging you to put this uh, on the wall or put it you know in display in some way so very nice that's that's a nice thing about it um, of course the screws are made of aluminum and these little nuts here so it's a two-piece screw system uh, those are made of aluminum as well and they have multiple colors to choose from as I said um, they uh, do not need a bag or board inside and we'll get to more of that in a minute but uh, it, it's a very snug fit for the average modern comic. Now, what does that mean? Well, anything after 1980s got a pretty good chance of fitting in here. Uh, post copper age, you can shake it and you can see here, it's right on the edge and look how little play space you have there. It's very little space, but you can shift it down to that. And now the gap is here and there's no gap there. So, it, it does move, uh, but not easily. You have to really kind of jar it pretty good, and there's very little play in there uh, anymore, and it would be really, really tight. Speaking of which, this, this case is way too tight for an annual or a trade 
or even or any or a double sized issue or anything like that if you're doing anything more than a standard issue on on this it's not going to fit your Marvel 1000, not going to fit. Any of your commemorative issues like Wonder Woman 750 or whatever, not going to fit. Um, this is for a standard issue of a book. I would even wonder if some of the heavier cardstock books might be a little too tight in there. Or if you have something that's embossed, it might be a little tight. Um, but for right now, it's it's just a standard modern book. That's it. Now, I've spoken with the owner of what I believe the owner of the company. I've spoken with someone at the company. And uh, they have told me that they are, of course, uh, in talks with manufacturing to increase more, to have more sizes available, which I would prefer. I don't really want them to change this. I like the snug fit. I just would like to see one that offered a, a size difference for a thicker book. Um, they offer a solution for your thicker books, but honestly, I don't even want to mention it because I think it's a poor solution. Um, they talk about taking taking the front cover off this one and using the front cover off a second one and putting two fronts together instead of a front and back. I think it's a makeshift. I, I don't like those types of solutions because now I have another two backs which isn't secure and isn't going to protect my comic because it's just going to be sandwiching two. Um, it's going to be sandwiching a book between two pieces of of uh, acrylic and that's not really you're going to crush the book you shouldn't really be doing that so so that's not really a real option to me because at that point you're paying 36 dollars for a makeshift solution why would i want to pay double for that so i'm out on that but uh i have to say that it fits these books snugly and i would be totally on board for a larger size multiple sizes and more selection in sizes and that's going to make a big difference super heavy construction presents beautifully in my opinion uh, and the screws are flush so that makes a big difference because when you lay the book down it's smooth it doesn't have any kind of um difference there in the size where the screw is that's totally flush in fact it's recessed to hair as well so that's really nice because that was one of my concerns when i first saw the uh, picture of these i said wait a minute am i going to be able to stack these am i going to be able to put them in a box or anything like that or are they, are they just going to be you know oversized and out of the way and then you can't and they'll be rolling over top of each other totally flat totally flush they actually fit in like a golden age size box and the top is just slightly taller than comics. So like if you have anything that has like dividers in it, it's roughly the same size as a divider, a little taller than a divider. So this should fit pretty well in most of your storage. Uh, it actually fits in my comic book cabinet. Slabs do not fit in there. So that's pretty nice too. <clears throat> let's, let's talk about um, some of the cons to this. Um, and that's that it has no uh, hanging, um, it does not natively have any way to hang it. So if you're gonna have the UV protection that I'm really excited about, you're begging me to hang this on the wall somewhere and I hang lots of, of my books on the walls. Uh, but UV is always a concern. So if you're gonna alleviate that concern, give me something to hang it. Put something back here, a little alligator punch or something to where I can hang it. I mean, why not, right? Or uh, give me a comic mount, you know, or something like that. So no hanging, no hanging natively. Um, <clears throat> the screws, the aluminum screws are way too soft. So, um, which is fine, they're pretty, but when you take a screwdriver to them, they will not, um, they, they will scratch the screws and they'll even deform them a little bit. And if you're gonna be taking your book in and out a lot, that's a little too much. So uh, I, I think that they really need to, um, I, so I'm okay with the soft screws, but I recommend adding like a plastic <coughs> screwdriver, like a guitar pick uh, screwdriver. If you've ever, if you've worked in any kind of tech, you've seen these. Uh, these are small little guitar pick screwdrivers and you can use them to, um, to turn screws. So they're cheap and easy to add that. Um, there's a lot of branding on the case as well. If you notice down here, it says Gator Guard across the front. That's recessed etching on the interior of the case. So you can't feel it. But then on the back, they've got kind of a gaudy, and, and I, the logo is cool, but you can't even really appreciate it on the case because, and I've tried different books in here and none of them really showcased the logo to where I liked it. 
Uh, most of the time, it just kind of looks like a blur or a smudge. And then they wrote Gator Guard again right there. Like, you don't need both of those things again. I mean, if you just look at it like this, there's three pieces of branding right in a row. Also, that logo is recessed, and it's inside the book. It's inside the piece of the acrylic that touches the book. That's a concern for me. Uh, it's a concern for me because I feel like if your book was too thick and you didn't have the right size book, and of course there's nothing between the book and the acrylic. Now you could maybe fit a uh, poly bag in there, but who's going to slab something with a poly bag and it'll have waves and everything? So my recommendation would be to cut a couple of sheets of Mylar from a bag to the exact size and put them in there to add a little extra protection against that. It is not raised to the touch. So if I take this out and touch it, it's not raised. It's smooth to the touch. Like you could run a, a sheet of paper across it. It would not catch. However, it is very, uh, you can feel the indentation in it. So that, that's an issue. If you're pressing anything, you want even pressure across your book at all points. And this does not provide that. In addition, there's some holes here. If, if that'll show up on camera, but there's like a little circle there you can see. And there's another one up here the same way that also is a little tiny circle. And those circles are the same way. They're inside facing the cover and they are recessed. Now, again, I don't think it would scratch your book because there's no, they filed it away or whatever. There's no, there's no hard edges touching the book, but it is recessed. And if you had a book pressed against it, I think for, for what would probably be considered an excessive amount of time, or if there was a moisture issue, which most people collecting books aren't gonna have that kind of issue. But if you did, I do think that over time, it could maybe even leave a sun fade of some kind, even though they're UV protected, it's only like 95%, right? So it could have a small fade if you left it on display. And if you stack them, and they're pretty heavy, so it would be easy to stack them and for it to pre depress the book a little bit. Even though they're real strong, I, I, would, uh, I do not have a machine to test the pressure weight that would push these down enough. But I would say it would not take too much, because you can take your hands and push them, and they do give just a little bit. So enough that if you had a thick book in there, it, I believe it would leave a mark. So that's that's really the only things that I, that I don't like about them. Those are big things. Um, I've already talked about all that, um, all my suggestions. Here's a comic mount. It fits perfectly on a comic mount and looks beautiful on the wall. I mean, it's absolutely stunning to hang that like that uh, away from the wall. It looks awesome. So I'm a total believer in these things. Uh, you don't have to provide these free. I mean, they cost money, but maybe offer them on your site or direct people to, to that or show a picture with them on there saying, hey, if you're looking to hang it, do that. Or just tool me a little circle right there. And I'm happy with that. There's also a lot of circle marks. Uh, I don't think they're injection molds, but they're like where the machines manipulate the acrylic. And so they're kind of hard to see, but if you see it in person, there's circles all over the edge of this, edges of this thing, and it kind of makes the book look like it has measles or something. <laughs> but they're not really um, in front of the artwork, except for in two places. So that's not too bad. I'm really not, uh, not mad about that at all. So um, I hope you all enjoyed that review. Now, we are going to get into a couple more things, but that's the, that's the basic review. And then we'll move on to um, doing some... Uh, a, a display of how we actually use the product. So we'll do that next. Thanks. Okay, now let's take a look. Uh, we're going to do a quick uh, demonstration of how this works. So I've got my trusty screwdriver handy. I'll show you how it comes. Now they include shipping in the $36 price tag, but I got to tell you, the shipping was pretty disturbing. Uh, it was just, they, they sent me two of these and they kind of stuck them inside of a flat rate envelope. Um, there was very little protection, very little packaging. And when my package came, it was damaged. The package was damaged, but the slabs survived. So if what they were going for was a testament to how strong these things are, they did well. It looks like they tried to do a little bit of packaging and padding on the corners, but honestly it did not instill me with any kind of confidence in the packaging it was very unprofessional looking but this company is only you know yay old and the product just hit the market and so i'm not going to knock them for that unless it had come damaged 
So if the slabs or the acrylic had been cracked in any way, then they would have got low marks for shipping. But the way I feel about shipping is if it ends up getting to me in one piece, then it gets high marks. <laughs> and this did. It was completely, uh, com completely secured in that way. It, it arrived undamaged. Uh, here's an example of some of the screws. So those are the blue screws that they had um, that I had ordered, and then those are the silver screws that they added. We're going to use the silver screws for this next one. Uh, so you just take them, and it's kind of a screw and nut design. Um, so it's not uh, it's not like real complicated. Anyone could put this together. You don't have to have uh, a whole lot of knowledge on how to do things uh, the perfect way. But I will say that, as I mentioned before, having some sort of soft screwdriver plastic would be better so you don't scratch or strip these screws any. Uh, but instead, we're just going to use a regular screwdriver to get going. Uh, they also come with this plastic on the acrylic. So that's nice. So that protects it from scratches while it's in transit. So we're going to peel that off. Sorry about the sound on that. So it looks like they are kind of individually wrapped. The other thing I noticed about these when I was taking off, when I was doing the first one, is that they left a lot of little tiny pieces of plastic on there. Um, and I've actually uh, worked in some manufacturing with acrylics before. And I can tell you that that's not hard to get rid of. You just gotta take a microfiber cloth and run the whole thing like usually it's just somebody sitting there and every product that comes off in quality control they'll just run a microfiber cloth around it before they uh wrap it before it goes into wrapping so if that's available i suggest you do that this one doesn't seem to have near as much as the last one i did the last one i had uh, the first one i opened where that spider-man is it was completely covered in little plastic shavings from manufacturing uh now it looks like this one Man, there's a lot of, I mean, that's tight. Nothing wrong with that though. Protect, the, protect it from getting scratched. Uh, they're very clean and, you know, nothing, uh, so like this one has a couple of the plastic things that I was mentioning. And it's, again, it's not a huge deal, but like, you probably can't even see it, but there's, see that little piece of plastic that's like dangling there? It's like in the breeze. So that just comes off. And that's just like, I mean, you're getting real picky on stuff like that, but that's just like a little piece of plastic that can uh, get stuck. And because the, of the way that they're wrapped, they're very prone to static cling. So, you know, you have that to kind of contend with as well. So anyway, here's what we got. Here's the book we're going to put in there. Convergence Zero, great Adam Hughes uh, cover. And uh, just uh, a book I'm excited to own. So we'll put that in there. And we'll see how that looks. You have to do the front down first. And uh, I recommend going ahead and putting in these tabs here. In there. Well, it's kind of hard to do. You kind of have to sandwich it first. I don't know. It's only my second time doing one. So we'll angle that down a little bit. And we'll take a look at it. All right, so let's get this book out of its mylar. Put it in there. Again, you know, rumor has it, you can get a uh, standard uh, poly bag to fit in there, but I just don't see why you would. Um, but there's, and all, let me show you this. So here are those circles I was talking about, and you can kind of touch them, and you do feel it, but they are not, uh, they're not rough to the touch. They're very smooth, so I, I really don't think that you'll have an issue with scratching. I, I think that that is, if anybody was like, oh, that's gonna scratch my book, I think, you, I think you're going a little bit too far on that. But uh, I do think if you had a really thick book, you could have an indentation problem. Here's um, the logo that they put in the back. And again, it has kind of a, it's flush, and yet you can feel it when you run your finger over. So that again could be an issue. You can see it's already picking up little pieces of dust and stuff because the acrylic is so electrostatic charged from uh, peeling off that plastic. So, all right. So now that's on there, it's fairly secure. And then I'm going to install these plastic buttons, if you will. They're kind of nuts, but you put them in, in the corners here and they really do secure in there. 
And then you kind of... And I just do a simple one first, and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do more later. Uh, more tightening later. But first, I just secure it with my fingers. Another thing I think you should include an extra at least one extra set of these so you should get five screws and five nuts with each one because I've dropped these things and maybe it's just my butterfingers but I have dropped these things a bunch uh, in the process of getting them installed so I've been chasing them around the the uh, floor ever since I got them so so maybe offer one or two uh, you know one of each one one nut and one uh, screw so there you go that's pretty much how it looks um, I'll go ahead and show you the tightening on it you don't need much but you do want to get it tight because like I'm not I'm just doing it till it till it stops and you got to kind of put your finger behind it in order to get the nut not to spin as well because the nut will spin so you can see there, so I just did that. I just put that on there. And you can already see, if you look there, that it's scratched. And I just did that with the screwdriver. It's got a chip and a scratch. Because it's an aluminum screw, it's just too soft uh, to use, you know, whatever metal that is against it. And uh, you just really, you really need a plastic screwdriver. Because you're not, you're not going to need a whole lot of torque to get these things closed. So, there you go. But that's why I don't put the screws in the front, because they're all scratched up. I think it looks cool, but it ultimately doesn't serve the product, because they end up being scratched. So there you go. There's uh, Convergence number zero, all done up, in the uh, uh, Gator Guards, Gator Guard cases. I think it's a fine product. I, I really like it. Um, I think it's perfect for these types of variants. Um, you know, I'm not a big slab guy. I have a lot of slabs, of course, uh, for my more valuable books. And this book uh, can get a little bit pricey as well. But overall, I slab my modern books because I want them to look nice and to present them. I don't care about a 9.6 or a 9.8. They're all high grade. I mean, it's a modern book. They're all going to be relatively high grade and present nice. I just want them to look nice in a case. And this really gets the job done for these. So I'm going to be a customer on these. I'm going to pick up a few more. And I hope that they get a silver size uh, next and, and eventually a golden age size. That would be fantastic. So that's been my... Um, my demonstration on how to do one of these next we're going to move into the final stage and that is the competition and we'll see how that how it stacks up to that thanks okay let's take a look at the competition so to me it has one two three four main competitors and one of them is has a caveat to it so the four main competitors first off are clear backing boards so here is my copy of Killing Joke, um, uh, Batman the Killing Joke, first print. And this is just in a Mylar. That's it. It's just a Mylar. But the back has a clear backing board. So that you can see the back, which has got a pretty cool uh, back cover art. Now, why is that important? Why is this a competitor? Because to me, this is really just a nice frame for a book. It's not doing anything more than that. It's protecting as any frame would, but it's really just a nice frame for a comic book. And it allows you to see the back cover, which in this case is, is not impressive. But it does allow you to see the back cover, and that's what a clear backing board will do. The other issue, uh, the other reason that I bring these up is because here's an example of a book that won't fit in there because it's too thick. So this book fits in a top loader, it fits in all the other products I'm about to show, but it does not fit in this. So I like that it's very snug, but you're going to have to definitely come up with more and more options, which may be cost prohibitive to say, well, we're going to have, you know, a snug book for this, a modern size, and then we're going to have one that's just, you know, an eighth of, a, of an inch, 
you know, with more gap in there, I mean, that may get a little excessive to have to come up with that many molds. Uh, I think eventually you'll end up settling on something closer to a thick silver size and then have a little bit more play in there. That's what most other companies have done. So anyway, here's Killing Joke with a clear backing board. Very nice. You can see it presents very well. It's nice and tight and, uh, and looks pretty good, I think. So there's one option. Another option, of course, is top loaders. So here you have um, my copy of uh, Batman Adventures number 12, first appearance of Harley Quinn, and a top loader. Now, this is the cheapest you can go. Yes, it's in Mylar, and it's got a decent backing board to it, but ultimately, this is two bucks for this. Now, where does it lose? Well, it's obviously very flimsy. It doesn't protect the book that well. The acrylic is low grade, so it's not that, uh, it's a little bit cloudy over time. Uh, you can't see the back cover. However, if you combine a top loader with the clear backing board, you've got a nice, that is to me the most low budget sweet spot right there. Because the backing boards cost, the clear backing boards cost anywhere from two to four dollars a piece, depending on the brand that you get. A top loader only costs two bucks, and a mylar bag will say is fifty cents. So you're talking about less than five dollars uh, to six dollars, anywhere from five to six dollars, and you've got a really nice kind of faux slab that's going to protect your book pretty well, and you'll be able to see the back cover. So that's an option, right? That's a competitor. So where does Gator Guard stack up against? that option I think it's much more secure it's much more sturdy but again there's multiple sizes of top loaders available multiple sizes of clear backing boards and mylar bags so you can make it work for you uh, I think that that is its closest competitor really uh, as far as money goes um, as far as it being a really cheap option so that's your cheapest option for slabbing something so this isn't going for the cheapest option and the strength of this is undeniable and I really like the different colored screws. It really makes a nice presentation. Okay, another one we have. We have uh, Incredible Hulk number 180, and this is inside an Ultra Pro One Touch magnetic um, case. So that's a lot of words, right? But if you're someone who uh, knows about collecting trading cards and things like that, this is a very common design in trading cards. And in fact, Ultra Pro has one for trading cards as well. But basically, you just pop that open, and that's it. It's a it's a magnetic it's a magnetic design. It pops and shuts right back, and that's it. Uh, very secure. Um, I've never had one of these magnets fail. Another thing that this does right is it's about the same thickness as as the as a Gator Guard, so they're competing on that level. But look at how much wider this is. I can. This is a um, this book is bigger than this book. So, you know, obviously it's Bronze Age, but it's bigger than, than this modern book. And it also fits Silver Age books and some Golden Age books. Not all. Some of them get a little big, like the Dell, the Dell books, they get a little big. But, but that's really nice, too. Um, the other thing is that this has a dedicated slot to hang. So I hang these, as you see, I use these as my main back displays so I can change out the books with every video. Uh, so very versatile. They hang. They look pretty good. But I got to tell you, those little magnetic marks have always been an eyesore to me. That hanging port, even though I like it, has been an eyesore. Another nice thing is that you can use a screw. It has a hole right there so that you can actually secure this to itself so that you don't can't open it so easily. So that's an added benefit. But you, this has so much play in it, it's ridiculous. You really do need a bag and board for this. And I use a clear backing board. Uh, so again, the clear backing boards come in handy. So where does Gator Guard stack up against the Ultra Pro uh, Magnetic One Touch? Well, price-wise, they're almost exactly the same. So that's something to consider. However, I think in aesthetics, the Gator Guard absolutely blows this away in looks. Absolutely blows it away. I think it looks way better than this. I wish it had an ability to hang it, and I think it would totally blow us out of the water. So for the same price, I would get the Gator Guard, assuming that they have the size of the book that I want to encapsulate. So, in fact, for this tutorial, I was going to crack open my uh, House of Secrets 92 
uh, which is signed by Bernie Wrightson, but it's in a uh, CBCS pink label or whatever verified signature. I don't care that much about the verification. So I was going to crack it out, clean it, press it, and put it in one of these cases, but it's just too big. And when I, it's like a sixteenth of an inch too big. But there's no way I'm going to crush a book inside one of these things. So really, only for modern books. Only for the most modern books. But I, I would give the edge to Gator Guard over the, over the one-touch case, especially if they come out with some more sizes. Their last competition, and probably their, their closest competition, is this um, uh, Comic Skins uh, comic case. So what this is, is this is a true slab at home kit where you have the ability to add a label. Uh, and some people with better printers and, and better skills might come up with better labels than me. I like a nice simple label. Uh, that way it doesn't distract from the artwork of the book. This is a golden age book, so you can tell that it's definitely pulling some duty that that can't pull. Here's, here's one thing. It has these black rails. I don't think that they're offering any other colors at this point, but they're definitely not offering a clear one, which is what I would probably prefer. The black rails look nice. I do like them. I like the ability to put a label, but you almost have to put a label on this because if you don't, it looks really goofy at the top to not have a label on there. So major drawback to this is that they're really not thick enough. So because they're soft and pretty pliable, you know, not near as rigid as the Gator Guard. So because they're soft and pliable, you can stuff just about anything in there and it'll close. But the problem is, is that they are, um, they're kind of crushing the book a little bit. And especially with the Golden Age book, you don't want to do that. It'll start waving, putting waves in the book. And also they have Newton rings. So this has an inner well of Mylar and it, it, the combination of that Mylar and this acrylic gives a ton of rainbow overlay to the book and Newton rings. I mean, it's, you can see there, see that little mark there and that mark there. Those are Newton rings. So, and if you press it, it only gets worse. So you can kind of make, make your own Newton rings. Look at that. So it is what it is. You know, if you're someone who already slabs books and you and Newton rings don't bother you, that's fine. But I'm looking to present them and the com the Gator Guard has no Newton ring effect. I even put Mylar against it and I still didn't get any Newton rings. So I find that that was a superior product in that way. And uh, price wise, these are the most expensive option. And then you still have to add a label. And if you don't add a label, these look really ugly with their standard comic skin label up there. They just look terrible. You have to put something up there. So that's more money, more time, more investment. You got to create the label in some way, or you have to have them make one, which costs even more. So at that point, I find that them to be less of a competitor with, with Gator Guards. I'm really only including them because they are a slab at home type option and uh and really if i have a golden age book of any size i probably have to get one of these because it's the only one that can hold it but they don't really they're not really that flat because it has kind of a hump in the middle from where the book is too thick so you got that to contend with too but those are the major competitors of the gator guard overall i feel like the price point is exact i really like the price point at about you know you can say $16 plus shipping or so, or $18 shipped. I, I think that the price point of these is spot on. I love the color combinations that you can choose from. I love that. I love the rigidity. I love the UV protective, which none of these other options provide. So, um, so all in all, I think it's a solid product. It just is missing it. I wish they would take some of my advice in this and others I'm sure have mentioned it as well but you need a plastic screwdriver so you don't damage those aluminum screws or you need stronger screws. Take your pick. Uh, then you need um, you need to get rid of all that extra branding on the back. It's just too much. Get rid of it all, smooth that out. Nothing should be touching the book that's not applying even pressure on the book. I think if you fix those two things and then you can do what you want about either recommending a mount kit or creating your own mount kit or just giving me a screw hole in the back, you know, those are your options on that as well. Uh, you know, take your pick on all that. But as far as aesthetics, I think it 
blows these other ones out of the park. I think they look fantastic. I personally don't really need a label on top of my book. I know this is convergence number zero because it says so on the book. But the only thing I'd want to know is, um, is the date that it was published maybe. And actually this is a is an empty chamber. You could fit a very thin label in there if you were so inclined and so resourceful. You could probably slide a very thin label in there. And I think I may play with that some soon as well. So that's it. That's my review of um, Gator Guards, uh, Gator Guard cases from Gator Guard Comics, AKA the Nashvillians. Uh, their link is below, check them out. Uh, see if these work for you. Uh, I can tell you that I'm going to buy a few more because they're absolutely, to me, they're perfect for a modern variant book. I think that's exactly what I want for a modern variant book. I want the protection. I don't need to get it slabbed. I don't care if it's a 9.6 versus a 9.8. I think it looks beautiful. The other nice thing is that if you are, and I did not spend a lot of time comparing the, uh, the acrylic in this to the acrylic of CGC, but I must say, I think it's better. The CGC acrylic always has a blue tint to it. And when you stack it up, you, that blue really pronounces itself. And you can tell that by whatever type of acrylic they're using, it has a blue hue. And uh, this is crystal clear and just as strong, if not stronger, than the acrylic that CGC is using. I have to say, the acrylic is far superior, I believe, to any other acrylic that I've ever come across. So they're using the right materials. And I really think, give me a few a few more size options, get rid of any uneven pressure on the book, and you've probably got a customer for life out of me. So that's all I got. Uh, check out the description below if you're interested. And, uh, you know, throw them a bone, give them a like. I think they have something of a YouTube channel, but it's probably just for promotional uh, uses. But I'll link that too. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Bub's Comics. Uh, remember, read a comic and uh, don't apologize for the glare. Bye-bye.